draw your attention to the ongoing campaign by Sinn Féin IRA against the United Kingdom. It has always been the stated intention of Sinn Féin IRA to achieve a united Ireland by any available means. They have currently decided to take the political path to achieve those aims. If a time should come when they do not continue to make progress, they have also made it clear that they will return to violence. The recent arrests directed against former soldiers who served in Northern Ireland are not an attempt at bringing criminals to account. These arrests are political in their intent, with the purpose of undermining the confidence of the UK government and its armed forces. The low-ranking individuals so far arrested have been targeted to further the political aims of Sinn Féin IRA. The Director of Public Prosecutions for Northern Ireland cannot be considered impartial. He and his family are deeply embedded with Sinn Féin IRA. That fact alone should be enough to expose these prosecutions to be malicious political attacks on behalf of the gangsters that maintained a 30-year campaign against the laws of all the peoples of the United Kingdom. That campaign is ongoing and these persecutions are just another form of attack. These prosecutions are a direct result of the Good Friday Agreement. We attach a letter from John Reid, former Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, to Prime Minister Tony Blair dated 4th of May. 2001, in which Mr. Reid states, the legislation should exclude members of the security forces. What do we want to know is was this exclusion hidden from Parliament? These actions by the Blair government were a betrayal of all that we hold dear. British soldier ever went on patrol with the intention of committing a crime. No British soldier ever placed a bomb in a pub full of innocents. No British soldier ever placed a bomb under a policeman's car. Prime Minister, please do not allow this appalling situation to continue. It is our belief that the government is operating a policy of appeasement. Perhaps they believe that the sacrifice of a few former soldiers to prevent Sinn Féin IRA from returning to violence is a price worth paying. If so, this is a terrible error. History, history proves that submitting to blackmail simply makes matters worse. Sinn Féin IRA claim that the incidents they are highlighting were not adequately investigated at the time. Every time a soldier opened fire in Northern Ireland, he was thoroughly investigated by the Royal Ulster Constabulary. These current prosecutions are an assault on our sense of honesty and decency. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> trials are expected to take place in Armagh, the heartland of the provisional IRA. Any judge delegated to try these cases 
will be subject to the coercion and intimidation of armed criminals. We attach several replies that our members received from their members of parliament. Note the almost identical paragraphs contained in most of these replies. They hide behind legal niceties. When laws are used maliciously against the interests of our people and our nation, then they are bad laws and should be vigorously opposed or changed. We expect our elected representatives to take these matters seriously. Yeah. 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 We do not expect to receive bland official copies put out to fend off our concerns. We deserve better from our government and we hope for better from you, Prime Minister. If we cannot get justice from Parliament, then who can we get it from? We understand that our own taxpayers are funding these prosecutions. How is it possible that we are paying gangsters for their legal teams to take legal action against our own protectors? 100% of the 55,000 casualties in the province were caused by the actions of criminals on both sides of the sectarian divide. Gangsters who considered the murder of anyone by bomb or bullet justified. Our soldiers, us, stood between them and were attacked while they attempted to maintain law and order. There are more than 100,000 former soldiers still alive in the United Kingdom today who served their nation in Ulster. Those soldiers not only faced our enemies on the streets of Ireland, but also at home. They defended the <coughs> liberties and freedoms of our people at the behest of Her Majesty's Government. The soldiers of that generation believed they were the good guys, risking their lives to protect the people of Ulster. Margaret Thatcher would turn in her grave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She would turn in her grave to see what is happening to her boys today. The failure of this government to defend our veterans could result in a severe loss of morale in the armed forces and create a reluctance for the next generation to enlist. If the United Kingdom is to maintain armed forces that are capable of defending our country, then they must feel that you, the Prime Minister, are watching their backs. We now look to you for leadership and support. We need a Churchill, not a Chamberlain. I have here some sample responses from our MPs. Some are supportive, but most are copies that repeat the word. 90% of the victims of the Troubles were as a consequence of terrorist activity. So who carried out the other 10%? Because I'm telling you, we certainly didn't. Yeah. What happens? 
when a soldier hesitates to defend himself. Well, let me remind you of Corporals Wood and Howes, March 1988. Dragged from their car by a mob. They didn't use their weapons. They hesitated. And as a consequence, on camera, they were dragged and murdered, beaten to death by a Republican mob in Andersonstown. That's what happened when soldiers are not allowed to decide whether it's time to pull the trigger or not. There's a foul smell that emanates from those letters and there's a foul smell that emanates from that house over there. Yeah. Yeah. It's the smell of fear. It's the smell of cowardice. It's the smell of betrayal. They are betraying us because they don't care. Yeah. No more. Yeah. No more. We defended you. Now it's your turn to defend us. All right, well done. Stop! Stop the funding. Sack the DBP, the Dep Director of Public Prosecutions, and save our troops. If you can't defend your army, then you don't deserve to have an army. Yeah! yeah. yeah. Today is just the beginning. When you go home today, get prepared to come back. And every one of you should be looking for 10 comrades, 10 friends, 10 former soldiers, or 10 supporters to come back. So that next time, we're not 1,000, we're 10,000, we're 15,000, because this is just the beginning. If our government can't defend us, the time may come when we need to defend ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.